Okay, thanks, Sanjay. So I'm going to go through the 3D assembly visualization in uh, related to line balancing, and then I'm going to wrap things up really quick. So here I'm at the routing level, and I've selected the routing we've been dealing with, and here's all the activities um, on the line. And I'm in here at the precedence tab. And I'm going to shrink a couple of things here to give myself some more working space. Um, so here's where we can define the precedence. You can just type in the row numbers, define precedence that way. Alternatively, we can define a precedence in the graph view. And lastly, I'll just mention here clusters. Clusters are groups of activities. You group them together so it's just a faster way to define precedence. So in the graph view here, you can see the, the relationships here. And this is, this is uh, part pre uh, process precedence, not part precedence. So here at this point, we've created processes. Those processes have consumed parts. You know, we've used assembly planner, video time study, or mode apps or most to define our process times, and we've created work instruction images. Now we line balance, which is assigning these activities to stations, result uh, calculating the resulting tag time, given the concern constraints. And the main constraint in line balancing is process precedent. So what are the relationships between all of these activities? So I, I can't do, I can't install the slow moving vehicle sign until I've done the inline trailer inspection as an example here, process precedence. So as the task sequence is defined, we can visualize the assembly to ensure that the, the build sequence is correct, okay? And, you know, this is a common problem, um, you know, that can be prevented by seeing the parts come together and then making appropriate changes here. So, so if I click on this, this uh, it's all moving vehicle sign, you know, it, it built, it added that part that it consumes. And I can, on any of these activities, I can, you know, pull up its properties, reusing the process data. So what's its picture and its description and its time, what models and options does this activity apply to, its detailed work steps, tools used, parts consumed and video. Okay, so that's, accessible to help us make better uh, processing uh, decisions here. So um, install rear end cap so you can just see the build. You know, if I click on these clusters here, which are just groups of activities, then you can see they build as well. Let me just expand the clusters so you can just see that there are activities within the clusters. Okay. Now, let me pan over here. And I'm going to zoom in here. Okay. And let me change my rotation here. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So here I go back into edit mode here. So I'm, I'm on this uh, obtain, obtain front fender parts. Now I'm going to install the rear fender. Okay. There we've installed the rear fender. Now the rear fender bar and then the tire. But you see that? So we're, we need to install the rear fender bar first before we install the first activity, which is currently the uh, install the fender. So to, to fix that build sequence issue, I'm just gonna click on, delete a couple of these precedence relationships, then redraw them. It's gonna go install the fender bar first, then the fender and then the tire, okay? And let's just see that difference now. Okay, so if now, Oh, sorry, it's down here, it moved on me. Now install the bar, then the fender, and then the tire. Okay, so there's a, we saw a build sequence issue and we and we quickly fixed it. Okay, now that's that's pre-line balance. Then you've, you've done your line balancing and then we come over here, line balancing, got our line balancing interface, which you've seen. I'm gonna open the Yamazumi chart here. Now, at this point, you know, we've done our initial automated line balancing, sign in processes, the stations, and 
We know the times at each station, the work content at each station. So the Yamazumi chart or, or stack up chart as it's sometimes called is um, useful to review the proposed line balancing scenario with teams of people, get buy-in, make manual adjustments, um, and see the work content, you know, and time variation at each station. Okay. Now the typical industry problem here, Yamazumi charts typically create an Excel without linkage to that process data. It's difficult to change station assignments after you make adjustments and no consideration of, of the constraints, um, precedence being the, the biggest one. So if you move processes, you might violate constraints um, and not be, not be aware of it. So let's change a couple of views here. I'm gonna throw, show these three different product models here. Okay, and then here is my product. Oops, okay, good enough for now. Now let me zoom in here and show, so you can see that these are all just the different activities. So for this one here, this one is install end caps. Okay, again, reusing that process data, this video, this is what the, gentleman's doing, he's gonna install the end caps and pound them in with a rubber mallet. You get the idea, but it helps understand what we're dealing with here in the slow moving vehicle sign. And so you can see, if I click on this here, then I click on install the end caps. The end caps were just installed. Install the slow moving vehicle sign. And then as I install more, if I as I click on more and more, you can see the product being built. Okay, now alternatively, I can do that for the station as well. Right, so this is what the product looks like when it comes in, when trailer comes in the station. These parts are then added at second station, third station, the tongue is added. And then down here, more things are added there, okay? So you can see the, st the, the build up at each station or by the task. Now, what? now let me just, do a couple things here. So I'm just going to move. Uh, let's say, let's say, let's move install end caps. All right, I'm going to move that to the first station. Oh, what's this? It says I'm violating precedence, and the I'm violating a resource. So I I need to have a rubber mallet at that first station. I don't have it. So that's what it's telling me. Two violations there, and what's the time change to the station? I'm going to say okay, and I'm just going to move one more here. I'll move that move the slow moving vehicle sign as well. And again, my appropriate violation. So now when I look at the first station's build versus the second, okay, the first station's build there, install end caps and the slow install slow moving vehicle sign are now done on the first station instead of the second station, okay? All right, so I think that shows the value of the 3D assembly visualization technology pre and post line balancing. And so just in summary here, so Sanjay and I have discussed and reviewed the 3D assembly visualization technology and the four different aspects of assembly planner and addresses those real world issues using different software systems, um, not all parts being consumed by the process when you're authoring it, incorrect or suboptimal build sequence, having 3D common parts floating, um, like hardware, nuts and bolts, um, lengthy time to create and edit work instruction images, and sharing CAD, the 3D CAD of the product with the shop floor operator. So that's what, that's what this technology overcomes and deals with. So if you'd like to investigate integrating your 3D product CAD, MBOMs and processes, please email us. The email address is info, I-N-F-O at proplanner.com. Thank you very much.